everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I am going to be ranking everything for Pandemic. That's going to include all of the Pandemic games, the spin-off games, expansions to all of it, the legacy games. So basically everything that's come out with the name Pandemic on it, except for promos and things like that. That's going to give us a list of 15 items, and today using my own concepts and ideas and largely probably arbitrary uh, concepts, I'm going to be ranking them starting from 15 all the way up to number one. And why Pandemic? Why do this? Because I love the series. I think it's been a very strong uh, line of games and expansions with very few missteps. And so, I wanted to tell you my thoughts on it. I'm often asked about Pandemic, which one do you like better, this one or that, what would you recommend? So here I've got also a video I can point people to if they're curious what I think of all of these boxes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into number 15. Number 15 and the weakest entry in the Pandemic Pantheon goes to Pandemic Contagion, which is, I'll admit, sort of marginally connected to the Pandemic games. This came out back in 2014 after Pandemic had gone through its reprint uh, and given a new look, the original Pandemic, that is. And this one was a game that really felt like it was just utilizing the fact that Pandemic was selling well to put out another game. For one thing, it's not cooperative. It sort of feels like Smash Up with a pandemic theme on it. And it's a small card game in which you are trying to place out influence in different locations. This one sets you as the virus. And that concept just didn't translate well to everything that Pandemic stood for. Everything it was doing, bringing people together to fight a common cause. This one just wasn't that exciting, wasn't that uh, appealing to me. I don't think it's a terrible game, mind you. It just doesn't feel like a pandemic game. So, my 15, Contagion. Number 14 for me goes to Pandemic Rising Tide, which I know a lot of people really like, but I always found it to be visually uh, messy, it's a little unappealing, and uh, mechanically, it's somewhat obtuse. It's got a really cool theme. I like the theme in this one quite a bit. The idea is you are the dawn of the industrial age in uh, the Netherlands, and you're keeping the water from coming in by making you sure you set up and maintain dams to keep the water out, uh, sectionalize the map, all of these cool ideas. Uh, drawing a comparison, of course, to the original pandemic, it's kind of like having a single disease, that being water, of course, spreading everywhere, and you must keep it at bay. It's interesting, from that point of view, the game just never really got its hooks into me the way many of the other ones did. I found it mechanically and uh, it just the development-wise, it was hard to see where your pressure points were going to come from. Oftentimes, you can find yourself surprised by a development you did not foresee, and certainly the look of the game was very problematic. This one is one that I believe would have benefited from being somewhat more abstract than as opposed to using a very realistic map based on the Netherlands. So, just never really, um, never really did it for me, this one. I enjoyed my few plays of it, but it's one I've actually gotten rid of and I have not gotten rid of very many Pandemic products. So there you go. That is 14 Pandemic Rising Tide. Number 13 goes to an expansion, the latest expansion to the original Pandemic called State of Emergency. This had a few variants in it, just like the other expansions. This one included Hinterlands, the emergency event, and yet another Superbug modification. That is a fifth the disease, the purple disease, we, I like to call it. The emergency events, I think, are fantastic. And in fact, I usually throw them into my Pandemic game anyway. They're a small addition, they're interesting, they're engaging. The other two, the Superbug just feels like yet another purple variant. We already had had a couple of those by this point, so it didn't feel very interesting. And then the Hinterlands was okay if, uh, even though it, it felt... Sort of like maybe one step too far. We already had had really interesting uh, expansions and ideas put into play that took you outside of the map given to you in the original core box. This one felt like perhaps one leap too many. 
Uh, it also just did not wow me. I thought that for a, a third act twist, the twist was not there. There were two expansions before this one. So while I like the emergency events and those largely put it where it is right now, the rest of it I don't really come back to very uh, frequently and uh, the emergency events are just a handful of cards. I mean, the box is regular sized box and that's the part I like in it. So that's why this one gets 13. Number 12 is another strange one that is only really marginally related to Pandemic. This is Pandemic Rapid Response. Now this one is a real-time game in which all the players are going to be working together, rolling dice as quickly as they can, making choices as quickly as they can, to fly their super plane around and deliver the things that are needed to different locations around the world. It's very cool. Thematically, it's one of the most interesting ones. Uh, mechanically, it is a game that is definitely not for everybody. You have to like a lot of really specific things to get into this game. And it's likely you have to play with really specific people to get into this game as well, not let frustration build up. You have to, like I said, roll quickly and make decisions as quickly as you can. Folks are watching you do this. They can help you make some of those choices. If you are playing with people who cannot help themselves but try to alpha game the situation, tell everyone what they should do for a, uh, a positive outcome, that could lead to some frustration in this one. But that is, again, a player problem, not a game problem, in my opinion. The game is interesting. It's different. It's really uh, outside of the box when it comes to the Pandemic games. By that same token, then, it's not necessarily going to appeal to someone who is a fan of Pandemic and most of its games. This is a very, very different idea. But still, if you like real-time games, if you like the, the pressure of that speed, then this is a good one. And I do recommend you check it out. Production is excellent in this, so no reason to not take a look at it unless you just don't like this style of game. So there you go, that is my uh, 12 Pandemic Rapid Response. Number 11 goes to an expansion, but not an expansion to the original game. This is the one expansion that came out for Pandemic The Cure, a dice game spin-off of Pandemic. This is called Experimental Meds, and it gave you two variants in the box, as well as eight new characters. Which is not a lot of content, but this is all dice driven, so it was basically a handful of dice and just a few cards in there. The variants were interesting, I thought they were neat, even though they added a decent amount of complication on top of the original game. Which I think was one of the selling points in the original game, that it was largely like Pandemic, a little luckier, a little swingier, but shorter. It was much easier to set up, much, much easier, and it was faster. You could knock this out in half an hour or so without having to learn too much rules overhead. The expansion with the two variants added a good amount of twists on top of that, which were good for people who wanted that, and others who just wanted more complication and more twists could just play Pandemic and some of its expansions. The roles uh, that were included, the eight new characters, were certainly a welcome addition, and they were neat. And again, each one of these had their own set of custom dice, which is fantastic. Very good looking content in this, uh, this game and expansion. So this is, again, a little lower than the middle of the pack because it didn't have a lot of oomph in the box. Um, but it was certainly an interesting one and recommended to anyone who was a big fan of The Cure, that spinoff from the game, which as you can tell, hasn't shown up yet. So uh, I think, you know, that it's a pretty good game. So let's go ahead and move on to number 10. The newest entry in the entire line of Pandemics is my number 10. This is called Pandemic Hot Zone North America. And this is basically a truncated, small version of Pandemic. You are going to have only three colors instead of four. Hand limit of six cards instead of seven. You are going to have uh, fewer locations on the board. There is simply going to be less to do, but you are doing largely the same things. It's going to take you 15, 20, 25 minutes, and then you'll be done with the whole thing. This is a good portable version of Pandemic if you are looking for something like that. This is going to be shorter, it's going to be simpler, uh, it's going to be something that is just easier to digest and you know show to folks that perhaps aren't ready for the entirety of Pandemic. It's interesting, it's neat, it also verges on 
that question of is this really necessary and who is this for? Who could possibly need a version of Pandemic that feels very much like the original one but with several things removed? Is that a good idea? Well, again, that's a very personal question. It depends whether you think that is something you'll be able to get to the table and maybe share with people you wouldn't share Pandemic with. But it's interesting, it's well made, and uh, it's, a, it's a clever little package. It's one I've actually played live right here on the channel, so you can look that up and see how it works. See it being played solitaire with a couple of characters, and get a very clear idea of what this looks like, and that question, you know, you can answer for yourself whether you need this one. But there it is, Hot Zone, North America, my number 10. And number nine goes to Pandemic The Cure. Pandemic The Cure, the dice game of Pandemic, is interesting. It was one of the earlier spin-offs from Pandemic. You know, uh, the idea of we're going to take the concepts you know, we're going to rewrite the whole thing. We're going to give it to you as a dice game. It's a new delivery system. Some new ideas at play. There was a, there's a really interesting concept of pushing your luck in Pandemic The Cure. You can continue to re-roll your dice if you're not getting what you need. You can do so as many times as you want to. But every time you hit a specific face on those dice, bad things happen. Or at least the, the pressure mounts. So the, the, uh, you know, the, the idea that something bad is going to happen very shortly is going to mount. So it's very cool. It's a, it's a very distinct feeling from a lot of the emotions that Pandemic is going to instill in people, to arise in people. So that's neat, and it's going to give you a different package. It also is not as divisive as something like Rapid Response, in which you either love the time pressure or you hate being under the gun like that. The idea of watching the sand just drain from the sand timer as you are, you know, panicking and rolling dice. This one doesn't have that kind of pressure. The game's faster, extremely quick setup, like I said, and very engaging. It is a little swingier than Pandemic. It's a little less uh, controllable than Pandemic, but it's a neat game. It's a good-looking game, and the main thing, ultimately, that you lose is immersion here. There is no board. You don't have um, that looking of, at a map and seeing where... Things are going awry. You're just not getting quite that feeling. It's there. It's just more abstract than the original game and many of the uh, other spin-offs. So there you go. Pandemic The Cure. Good stuff. My number nine. Number eight goes to the very second thing that ever came out with Pandemic on it. And that is Pandemic on the Brink. The first expansion to the original game. Great stuff. This one includes, again, a few variants. And the main reason it's not higher on the list is because of those variants. I think one is likely my favorite, and one of them is very possibly my least favorite. What can you do? Those are Virulent Strain, I think is a fantastic spin on the original Pandemic. More theme, more interest, a more volatile game state. You're never quite sure what's coming down. Um, and on the flip side of that, the bioterrorist scenario, which is one of the most convoluted and least interesting ways to play Pandemic, which casts one player in the role of a nemesis to the world and has that player take over for what the game of Pandemic largely did on its own. That brilliant system that imbued all this cardboard and plastic and wood with a life of its own. You take that away from the game, you give it to a player, and you give them a whole bunch of rules to simulate that. Doesn't work very well. But the rest of what's in this package, new characters, this is the first introduction of that fifth disease, that purple disease, which was uh, mind-blowing at the time. And then those virulent strain cards. All of that is so interesting and engaging that this is almost, uh, this almost goes hand in hand for me with the original Pandemic. You know, I have a hard time differentiating the roles from the original game with the roles from On the Brink. Because again, this was the very first one and there was so much interest there. Some of the really early core ideas in the role creation were, were you know, created in these two sets. So I think it's fantastic. On the Brink is... Absolutely recommend that if you have Pandemic and you don't have any expansions, 
This is a great one, and even though I've yet to cover all three of these expansions, hence the last one, that'll be the middle one, is a little higher on my list, I still wouldn't recommend this one first to a lot of people if they are just getting into Pandemic and want more content. If you're ready for more, you want new characters, a couple of small variants, I would, I would still recommend On the Brink earlier. So there you go, great stuff, number eight, Pandemic on the Brink. Number seven goes to one of the weirder spin-offs to Pandemic, thematically anyway, that is Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu, which a lot of folks, I remember distinctly when this was originally announced, thought, oh boy, Pandemic has now officially jumped the shark. They're now doing a Cthulhu spin-off. And I understood that sentiment to a large degree, but you know what? Um, the game is really engaging and interesting. And yes, the word pandemic on the cover seems strange. Doesn't really seem to fit what's going on. I simply don't worry about that and enjoy the game for what it is. A tense, interesting, cooperative game uh, with cultists spreading around the city trying to bring about ruination. And the players are going to be working together to keep that from happening. Cooperation is nice. The game is simpler than Pandemic. It's shorter. It's a little swingier also. Um, and it is a really well-produced one. This has plastic figures for the players and the cultists, so the game looks really good. It's a lavish production. It's very uh, attractive. And I've always enjoyed this one whenever I want to play something, usually solitaire or two-player, and I... I want something that's a little bit faster, a little, you know, gets to it a little more quickly. I think Reign of Cthulhu does a really good job with that. Now, of course, if you don't like Cthulhu stuff, if you are over that whole thing or were never into it in the first place, yes, that's this is going to feel like a gimmick. You know, it's not going to be particularly appealing to you. But if you like the theme and you haven't tried it just because you figure, ugh, this is going to just be some cash in. I disagree. I think this is a really well-made game. It's interesting and uses some of the original concepts of Pandemic while introducing some great stuff uh, all of its own. So, Pandemic Raid of Cthulhu, my number seven. Number six goes to the unmentioned expansion to Pandemic, the only one left, Pandemic in the Lab. What a great variant. And this is all about that in the lab variant. By the way, there's other things. You've got the... Again, the, the second spin on a fifth disease, the purple disease. We already had one in On the Brink. This, is, there was, this was another twist on that. And you had team play, which was neat. You can now play with teams. A much better idea than the bioterrorist idea. But in the lab is where the game truly grew. This gave you a zoomed-in look at labs all around the world in which they were trying to figure out how to solve the problems and it was completely captivating a lot of rules given a lot of new things to learn but thematically interesting really connected you know and the, the, the expansion gave you a lot of new things to do without pulling focus too much from what was happening on a global scale in the game it was very engaging i think uh in the lab is one of the more robust spin-offs or, you know, sort of side uh, adventures that Pandemic has ever uh, attempted to do. And it really holds up. Very clever stuff. So, I think this is the strongest of the expansions, ultimately. But like I said, I think On the Brink is probably one you should try first. It's, it seems more like groundwork, whereas In the Lab is a bit more uh, advanced and you're going to want to get into this one if you've already really exhausted your pandemic copy and on the brink and you're looking for something that's going to shake that up in a, in a convincing way in the lab is going to do that that's my number six pandemic in the lab Number five for me was a return to form after Pandemic Rising Tide left me cold. This is Pandemic Fall of Rome. Another spin-off of uh, these yearly spin-offs that they did for a while. This one, of course, took you back to Rome in which you were trying to defend Rome from different barbaric tribes trying to move in and uh, sack the cities. Very interesting thematically. This one added dice-driven combat to the system. It added legions that would travel with you around the map. It added recruiting. It added uh, 
uh, different, you know, five things you had to deal with instead of four. So now, you know, being groups of, of nomadic tribes and things like that. Um, and it had a really cool twist in which the way you could win the game was different depending on how you wanted to tackle it. You could, you know, cure all five colors or you could simply cure, say, four and just remove the fifth one from presence on the board. That also would net you the win. This one also happens to have one of the very best solo variants across the entirety of Pandemic. So if you are someone who enjoys playing Pandemic Solitaire and you want a dedicated solo variant uh, that feels distinct and not just like you're running two characters for a missing person, this one is truly going to give you that. The mode here to play Solitaire is clever, it's engaging, and it's a, th a thought went into it. You can tell that they uh, took time to develop this one. Really great stuff, thematically interesting. Uh, it's got reversals of fortune, it's very tense, it's difficult, it's engaging, I like it a lot, and it's beautiful to boot. Pandemic Fall of Rome is my number five. And finally, we get to the original, ladies and gentlemen, Pandemic, the 2008 release. Uh, which I had till just about a few months ago, in fact, that very original release. I've now only kept the reworked edition with that new pandemic look. But that original game, uh, it did not invent cooperative games, but it certainly streamlined them. It gave them uh, new life, new breath. It was a revelation in how a game could feel uh, smart and could feel like it was plotting and planning against you. It also made cooperation simple to engage in, but uh, interesting. It gave everyone really cool abilities. And again, a lot of these things were not new to Pandemic. Pandemic not, did not invent many of these things, but it managed to bring them all together uh, to give you an engaging, quick playing package. I think the most interesting thing in Pandemic the one thing that, if I'm not mistaken, has pretty much carried through most of these spin-offs, the true innovation here is the idea of having the deck of cards that's bad, bad things happening on the world, have those cards be shuffled and placed back on top of the deck at specific intervals throughout the game. Meaning that, just using that very simple system, it simulates hot spots across the globe across whatever map you're playing on. The idea that if things are going bad in this location, they will continue to go bad there. That is the stroke of genius, I think, of Pandemic. And that's what I think ultimately made it such a successful game. Had so many spin-offs. It's a truly fantastic game. I cannot recommend it enough. Brilliant, brilliant design. And that's my number four. But we still got three more things to go. So let's take a look at those. I still have not touched, of course, on the Pandemic Legacy games, and uh, there's two of them, so I guess they're in the top three. Let's go ahead and get into it. My number three is Pandemic Legacy Season 1, the very first one. Uh, what a revelation. What an absolute um, earth-shattering concept. And again, we had had Legacy games before this point, but they hadn't been cooperative, which was, I think, uh, the way to do Legacy games where you are attempting to solve a puzzle and every time you do so, every time you look at a problem long enough and solve it, that problem shifts on you. It's just a moving target that you all have to continually hit. That's the way to do it. So it's that. And then taking Pandemic and adding so much story, so much drama and interest and uh, highs and lows and uh, a plot to pandemic that was sort of happening around you. You weren't necessarily driving that plot. You were just doing your jobs. But there was this bigger plot happening around you. This game um, made it to number one on Board Game Geek for a reason. It was completely captivating. If you've never played it and you like cooperative games, and I really do think that's about the only requirement I need to list. If you like cooperative games, you should play this game. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, why is it three only? Because it's very much like Pandemic, except for that story-driven 
aspect. The what's in there, the core of this game, doesn't have a lot of massive deviations from original Pandemic. Season 2 did that. It had really distinct, weird, it took a lot of the rules and turned them on their heads. That's why it's a little bit higher. Let's get to it. Pandemic Legacy Season 2 gets the number 2 spot. And again, like I just said, it's because of that. It's because, yes, the first one, Pandemic Season 1, was first. It did amazing things. And the second one could have easily continued to do those things, simply replicated what had happened in the first one and followed and its own story arc, but it did not do that. It, it is completely different from the way Pandemic feels and plays. It is It takes a lot of the very core concepts, which I'm not going to explain for fear of spoiling things, and turns them completely on their heads. Things work in reverse as to you would as to the way you would expect them to work. Um, new things are you know come into play that you just do not foresee, etc., etc. It is a, an absolutely brilliant piece of design, and the only thing that's missing from it is that it wasn't first. Uh, I think that's largely why it does not get the adoration that the first one got. The first one was revolutionary. The second one is. I think ultimately a better game, a more interesting design, especially if you're a veteran of Pandemic, because this will be very, very different. But it wasn't the first Legacy, Pandemic Legacy game, so it misses out on that. Still, you should definitely try it, though I would recommend play the first one first, then go ahead and get into this, otherwise you'll be missing a lot of story that carries over from the first. For those of you who've been paying attention, you know what my number one is at this point, uh, but... Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get to it. My number one Pandemic product of all time is Pandemic Iberia. Pandemic Iberia does so much right. And a lot of that is driven from the setting and the theme. I think it's got a very interesting, captivating setting. It's old-timey, which is engaging. It's not a modern setting. I like that. I, I find that uh, to be... Um, Again, even though the, the theme is not necessarily a cuddly theme in Pandemic, any of the uh, versions of Pandemic by its very nature, I find that setting this in the past does give you some perspective on it, and I find that appealing. I find uh, the game mechanically to be very interesting, much more so uh, when it comes to the balance between short-term gains and long-term plans. I think that in the game is more interesting than the original Pandemic. There was a lot of reacting in the original Pandemic. You know, it's uh, you're making plans and come to fruition in maybe two turns, maybe three. In Iberia, you need to put plans and infrastructure into play that is possibly going to pay out in eight turns. Possibly not at all. But by the time you need it, if you did not put those things into, into play, if you didn't, you know, place them where they need to be placed, then it's too late. You can no longer do it. The game also looks stunning. One of the probably the most gorgeous pandemic game out there. And it has a couple of included variants that I find very appealing. Again, they are driven from a loosely historical point of view. I know that the diseases represented in this game didn't all happen at the same time, so that's a you know that's a stretch, but still, uh, the variants in there make the game more challenging if you want that. And they are going to give you really interesting spins on what's going on. Especially the, the hospital challenge in which when a hospital is able to start treating people in the game, then the population at the end of every turn starts to rush into it and overwhelm it. It mechanically works fantastically. And lots of pressure is, uh, is generated by that very small twist to the mechanisms. So there you go, Pandemic Iberia. Really great stuff, and the reason it also goes above my seasons uh, one and two of the Legacy games is very simple. I can replay this to my heart's content, whereas seasons one and two are finite. You will reach the end of those games and you will be done playing them. Sure, you can play another copy, you can buy it again, but a lot of the surprise and interest is, yeah, going to be lost. Pandemic Iberia does not suffer from that. You can play this... Uh, as many times as you want to, and it'll generate new results and new ideas 
you know, with new characters, what have you. So there you go. That is what I think of all of the pandemic games ranked. Thank you for checking this out with me, folks. Let me know in the comments below how you would rank a lot of these games. Where am I wrong? What should be higher? What should be lower? And uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that. But until next time, I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for watching.